Welcome to Dr. Judy Morgan's Naturally Healthy Pets, today featuring her sister, best-selling author, speaker, and holistic physical therapist, Sally Morgan. Are you looking for a deeper connection with your animals, exploring options and alternative healing modalities, searching for training options that you feel good about? Listen now to Sally as she interviews the top experts that answer your questions to help keep your pets naturally healthy. Hello and welcome to Dr. Judy Morgan's Naturally Healthy Pets and I am Sally Morgan and Dr. Judy Morgan's sister, a holistic physical therapist for pets and people and your host today. You can hear this show on Mondays and Tuesdays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on DreamVision7Radio.com. And today I am here for what is actually our farewell show with me, with my guest Helena Bresk, who is a holistic practitioner from California who I've known for several years. She does massage and she does pain relief modalities. She was born and raised in California and she began to treat animals with body work and healing as a teen and soon progressed to working with her families and friends. She loved to ride horses in the Carmel Valley as a youth and hike there as well and she learned from and observed nature all around her throughout her growing years. She was a student in animal science and pre-vet at Cal Poly State and she developed an interest in and a passion for the natural health and healing of all humans and animals. In her years after graduating, her own health challenges, as for so many of us, led her to look for balance with a healthy body and mind to require um, health in all areas of your life, mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. With this in mind, Helena's massage and healing techniques include therapies that balance and replenish your mind, body, and spirit, just like what I do with holistic physical therapy. She continues to seek ways to assist the body in its abilities to slow down aging, reverse pain, and enhance healing. She excels at facilitating a graceful return to optimal health um, and assisting with the passing of loved ones. And she has met several of our um, guests that we've had on the show. Helena loves people and animals and is happy to work with any species. She has a vast network of people and friends and products that um, can be helpful, including the fact that she is a Beamer representative, which is a type of mat popular in Europe that has been sci scientifically proven to improve microcirculation and assist in the body's self-healing mechanisms. She has many success stories that she might share with us, and um, you can book a session with her if you are in the... St. Where are you, Helena? St. Louis Obispo Pat area? <laughs> Pat Robles, California. Oh, uh, yes, Long Robles, California. So I am so happy to have her with me today because we are doing, as I mentioned, our farewell show, and we will be looking back over the 12 or so guests that I've hosted over the year and remembering some of the amazing lessons that we've learned from them. And I think we'll start with um, Ella Biddle, the vet who talked about hospice care for pets, because indeed Helena has worked with her and I'm sure she has a story to share. Welcome, Helena. Thank you, Sally. What a great introduction. Really wonderful. And yes, I've had a lot of success stories and including with some of those people you mentioned, uh, Ella was actually my holistic veterinarian for my horses, dogs, and cats for, gosh, I think about 15 years since I first met her in, in Buellton. She's about, she was, she, she uh, went to Costa Rica, darn her, but <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> She's still available on the Internet. <laughs> I know, I know. And so at first, she did um, our acupuncture and chiropractic for my dogs, horses, and cats. And then uh, when some of them passed away during the time that she was available to me, she came many times to help support the hospice care of dogs, cats, and horses. And uh, really learned a great deal about that end of life and being less afraid of the end of life and more supportive and I've been able to uh, allow and support a number of dogs, cats and a couple of horses to pass naturally with the right kind of support. Uh, you know, I made some glitches at first not having enough support and sometimes you need meds to sort of ease them but it has been a wonderful 
interaction, and I still keep in touch with her, even though she's been out of the area for quite some time, what, four oh, or five yeah. years now, I think. Yeah. Uh, but she, I credit Ella with a number of saves of animals. She researched and found ways to help save the life of my horse who was dying after a, uh, a vaccination just threw him into an immune malfunction so severe it came very he was starving to death and Ella was we tried everything for that horse and we finally found some techniques uh, crazy enough the main thing that turned him around was organic coffee enemas Hmm. Well, there's been lots of evidence in the human world for lots of help for um, different maladies with that. So uh, the giant gut that a horse has, I'm not surprised. It was quite phenomenal. Uh, you know, a dying horse, I actually had the the um, animal control come to tell me I wasn't feeding my horse, but Ella had written a thing saying, nope, he's in hospice care. And with the adding the organic coffee enemas, the acupuncture chiropractic, the Tellington touch, the nutritional things, uh, that horse came all the way back and he lived for many more years to be in his mid-30s and looking absolutely wonderful and rideable. That's one of the great things about some of these holistic practitioners we've talked to. They don't give up. And I think one of the great things we learned from our show with Ella is exactly what you said, Helena, which is to not be afraid of the process of letting your dog or your cat or your whatever go into hospice care because it really is a beautiful process if you can make peace with it. And I feel very fortunate to have seen many animals cross the bridge. Another practitioner we had on our show that does holistic veterinary work is Alan Schoen. Have you, um, you're familiar with Alan, right, Helena? You've read some yeah. of his great books. Oh, I really have, and, and I credit him and his work with a lot of the success I've had with my animals, switching completely away from chemicals, medications, flea and tick chemicals, et cetera, and going to predominantly raw, holistic, organic uh, supplements, essential oils, and my, in the last 30 years, most of my cats have lived to be very close to 30 years old. Oh, and you have had such great cats, too. I, I <laughs> you know, my sister has very old dogs, but it's, I know that cats can live to be in their 30s, and that mm -hmm. is incredible that you've, all of your animals, your dogs have been quite older, too, haven't they? Yeah, Magic, who passed away the year before last, it was a cancer survivor that Ella, by the way, helped me with greatly. And some of the, the uh, information from Alan helped me greatly. And we completely holistically, at when he was age 14, got him turned around. And by the time uh, he passed away, after LifeWave patch intervention and Beamer intervention and raw food, he lived to be 20. Yeah. See, that's amazing for dogs. People just don't expect it. And he was a big dog, right? He was a 75-pound German Shepherd lab right. cross. <laughs> and he, and they might he give that to a chihuahua, but these big dogs <laughs> to live that long, I mean, it really is a credit to proper care. And he passed away on his own, comfortably having eaten a big meal the night before, lying on the beamer and coming to get me and just lying down and leaving without any effort. That's a beautiful thing, and we would all be so lucky if we could have that happen with our animals. And thank God for Alan, because I know when I had my first dog diagnosed with um, degenerative myelopathy, he had a list of supplements on an old website from when he used to be in my area, and that was a gold mine for me at the time, because there's no information, and he really is somebody that we have to be grateful to for um, popularizing and initiating the whole holistic wellness for animals in this country. Another person that uh, really was an advocate for helping animals um, in a non-conventional way was my good friend Susan Collins, who is a T-Touch practitioner, who wrote a book about raw diets for cats to help her own cat who was sick. And she worked with a veterinarian and created this wonderful book, the... Um, the uh, household carnivore about feeding raw for cats. And I know you have lots of experience feeding your cats raw diets, don't you, Helena? Yes, I do. 
and but I didn't know about uh, her book, so I'm gonna uh, put that down. What is it called? The the household carnivore. Okay. Uh, yeah, we had a woman come and speak to us at a Tellington Touch seminar some um, 25 years ago who was a big advocate of the raw diet, and it was, uh, I don't know if it was Susan, um, but at the time I was searching and I realized, oh my God, this is, this is the answer. And so people like her and the holistic veterinarians um, that, that we've heard of, Dr. Dr. Schoen, and there are a number of others who advocate raw, and I've said at least half raw and, and most of the time three quarters raw as I've learned more and more, and it's made a huge difference. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're all now, I think practically everyone listening to this show is familiar with raw or lightly cooked food for your dogs and home-cooked food for your dogs and the dangers of kibble, but a lot of people who have cats, as soon as the cat rejects the new food, they give up, and that's so Mm -hmm. sad because a lot of cats really will thrive and do well on a raw diet, and people are just very hesitant to make that transition because... Cats are picky. They don't necessarily jump right in and eat that the first day you give it to them. It's really true. And since uh, Sarah passed away, my my uh, kitty, who was somewhere between 20 and 25 years old, uh, she passed away about a month, about six weeks ago. And I have two new kitties. And my opinion is that these kibbles have additives that cause co- it's. I think they're like they're addictive. And the, the animals become junk food junkies. And these kitties that I have now, I've had them for three weeks. It'll, they'll be three weeks here on Monday. And they both, I was given their their food with them, and it was this horrible dry stuff. And they were so addicted to it that they, they thought the raw food was poison. Right. So that's I, that's yeah. many cat owners' experiences. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had to be very creative and, and gradually work it in, but they're now almost fully. I still have to put a little kibble on top of the kitten's food, which is really surprising. He's this vital, vivacious, about seven-month-old kitten, and he just thought, you know, I'm hungry. Why are you giving me this slop? But now he's eating it with gusto. Well, that's so great to hear, and I know Susan's cat was so sick, and that what is what prompted her to explore ways to um, formulate raw diets for cats, and it was very difficult. You know, she worked with a great veterinarian who helped her to figure out what kinds of supplements and minerals to add, and it's so interesting because I know people who have tried to switch their cats to raw food, and many of those cats are perfectly happy eating a mouse out in the yard, and yet you give them raw food that be skinned and tailed <laughs> and they uh, snug their noses no. at it so it's and we have so many great companies in it t- today that um, you can get products from for cats hair today uh, is back and they um, do actually even sell um, mice and rats for cats diets so we are so lucky oh, we've really? come so far so another person that uh, my very first guest on the show was um, my friend Sandra Mendelson, who you have not met, I don't think, and it would be great for you guys to meet. Um, she reminds me of you. And she is yeah. an animal channel, and she has written a lovely book with messages from the animal world to us um, with things that people need to know to live the world more, live in the world more mindfully and peacefully and compassionately. And her little book is just full of messages from a horse or a squirrel or a dog or perhaps from gorillas in a general way and she gets messages from these animals you know at night or during the day when she's walking and uh, she has really it's a different type of animal communication to be an animal channel and I'm sure you know many animal communicators but it really I mean I'm sure you've seen in your life that animals in the natural world have a lot of messages for us I mean you're not too far from the ocean there Um, what's your experience with animal messages well I'm going to give an example because I have I'm a communicator myself although I don't use it in the traditional way I use it in my healing work and connect with the animal even before I meet them but the latest huge channeling experience I had was with the elephants in Thailand 
we brought the Beamers over there, three, three Tillington Touch practitioners, two other practitioners, and I.